Hey, it's Don Skaggs with Empowered Inventing, the one place where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom to turn them into real things like products and businesses. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm holding a bucket of KFC, or as we know it in a lot of other places, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, if you think you know the guy whose picture is on this bucket of chicken, you might not know him at all. Because if you think you can't be successful just because you've had some failures, because you've had some hard knocks, because you know some things just blindsided you and hit you upside the head and knocked you down to the ground, and you think you can't be successful because of those things, then you need to take a good look at this guy. And uh, yes, this is real fried chicken in here. Um, so Colonel Sanders, which whose picture is on this, he's an iconic figure. He's known the world over. There are uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, restaurants all over the world. They're in China. They're in Japan. They're they're just about every uh, you know odd spots on the world. You see Kentucky Fried Chicken, and he's one of the most recognized. And at one point was one of the most very most recognized um, uh, iconic figures uh, across the world. It's funny. I will talk to people and this is kind of the funny Kentucky connection here, is I will talk to people in different parts of the world. And they'll say, uh, you know, and I'll tell them, I'm saying, I'm calling you from Kentucky, from the United States and from Kentucky, and in the, in within the United States. And they'd say, oh, Kentucky, I love your chicken. <laughs> Which I just kind of have to laugh because, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it started in Kentucky. Uh, and it kind of kind of brands us a little bit, but you know we're not just you know uh, fried chicken and horses in in Kentucky. Uh, I'd like to think we're a lot more than that. But it, it's just kind of funny to hear because people across the world recognize Kentucky as Kentucky Fried Chicken. So anyway, uh, Colonel Sanders, one of the most recognizable people, and you think of him when you see him, you think of this wildly successful restaurant and this wildly successful chain, and this wildly successful brand of chicken, fried chicken. And what you may not know, though, is that what it took to get him where he is, or where he you know, became, he's long passed away, but what, what, it, what it took him to get started. And there's, here's some, for instance, some really interesting early facts about Colonel Sanders that you might not know. One is that he had failed 1,009 times before succeeding. He was out peddling this chicken from restaurant to restaurant and saying, I've got a new way to fry chicken. I've got a new way to do this. And he, um, I won't set this down a second, hang on. So he had successfully, I don't want to get to the end of that in a minute because that's that's a whole interesting thing by itself, but he was going around restaurant to restaurant and said, I've got this new way, it's using a, a, a new kind of pressure cooker, I'm cooking, uh, pressure cooking chicken in oil and I'm using my 11 herbs and spices which is still apparently a trade secret, which is probably a topic for another video, uh, trade secrets, uh, but he went to a thousand and nine places now, let me ask you this. How many of you all out there would give up after the first hundred? After the first 500? 1,009 no's before he got to a yes. That's tenacity. But oh, it gets better. He was, uh, by the way, a little bit of his background, uh, he, he spent half his life working odd jobs. He did a lot of different things that just did not work out. He, he tried this and he failed. He tried that and, his, and he failed. Uh, he sold insurance. He worked odd jobs. 
Um, he sold tires for a while. He, he spent some time shoveling coal in, I guess, the old locomotive steam engines uh, back in the day. Uh, he made lighting systems for a while. He operated a ferry boat. He had a stint in the army. So he had a pretty colorful past. He had a pretty uh, diverse past. But he did a lot of things and apparently they, they didn't work out, he didn't like them, they just, they just weren't working for him. Finally he buys a gas station. Now he starts out in this little place called Hell's Half Acre. You won't say you're from a place that sounds bad. Hell's Half Acre just, just does not sound like a pleasant place. Uh, but uh, actually I know where that is in Kentucky. It's not that far from, uh, from where I'm standing right now as a matter of fact. It's you know probably less than 100 miles. So anyway, so he goes down from there to a little town in Corbin, Kentucky, which I also know. And if you've ever been drove up from, uh, say, Knoxville to Lexington, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an exit for Corbin along I-75. So, uh, uh, by the way, if you ever go through there, there's a little museum, uh, Colonel Sanders Museum. It shows this gas station where he started. They kind of, like, uh, show how, uh, you know, how it looked back then. So at this point in his life, he's buying a gas station and a restaurant, and he's frying this chicken up. And it's going really well for him. And then guess what? The interstate comes through and nobody's driving down this little road that he used to be on. Now you can still get off the interstate and go to it now, but nobody would take the time to do that back then, uh, to go to this, uh, to this little gas station restaurant. And so he finds himself at the age of 65, penniless. And it's like, what am I going to do now? But he developed this way to fry chicken that was different. He knew that frying chicken usually takes, took a long time if you did it the old conventional way. And he figured a way that took eight minutes putting it in a pressure cooker, frying it in oil instead of water inside this pressure cooker. He spent days on the road selling this technique to restaurants and saying, just for everyone you sell, I just want four cents per chicken. Imagine going around and saying, I, I just all I want is four cents per chicken. You make a sale, it's four cents per chicken, but guess what? That added up. So he's sleeping in the back of his car. Now you think he's 65 years old. He's starting over. He's an inventor, he's an innovator, he's an entrepreneur. And he's turned down a thousand and nine times before he got his first sale. Now to me, that is just the epitome of tenacity. I don't know if I would do that. Uh, but he did, and he was successful because he did. So what can we learn from all this? Well. First off, it really doesn't matter where you come from, what your origin story is, how bad you might have had it, how, what an uphill climb you might have had, including if you came from Hell's Half Acre, Kentucky. So it really doesn't matter. You don't count that in. You don't leave that in your soul, in your mind as, as oh, this is, this, I, I, I can't do that. I, you know, I'm, I'm just from this little holler back in, holler is actually a Kentucky name. It's like if you live between two hills back in the hollow or holler, a uh, little Kentucky culture uh, uh, information. Um, so, you know, you can say, oh, I'm just from this little holler back in, or I'm just from this you know, inner city place, or I'm just from the, Don, you don't understand. No, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. We all start in the same place. It doesn't matter where we start. Matter of fact, I think if you've had an uphill battle, I said this in another video, I think if you, if you have it a little harder and you're not starting with a lot of money, sometimes if you have the right wisdom and you apply the right principles, you can have an advantage, a clear advantage over the people that start with a lot of money and a cushy beginning and they haven't had the experiences of fighting an uphill battle because this is an uphill battle. It certainly was for Colonel Sanders. So don't, don't, don't count it in the mix of where you come from. It doesn't matter. We all start in the same place, one way or the other. We all have different bad things that happen, good things that happen. 
It's what we do with those bad things. And some people have more bad things than good things. But you still, it's what you do with what you've been dealt. I've seen it. I've lived it. I know it. And I know it can, it can be that way for you. So, another thing is don't let lack of funds hold you back. It's kind of part and parcel of what I just said. Colonel Sanders bootstrapped. He, you know, think about it. That's a bootstrap story. Sleeping in the back of your car, going from restaurant to restaurant with a pressure cooker and saying, let me show you how to fry this chicken up. Look how good this is. Let me demonstrate this for you. That was bootstrapping. <clears throat> and you know what? It added up and it became bigger and it became bigger and it became bigger and then it became what it is today. So don't let fat lack of funds hold you back at all. Another thing, don't think that you are too old or that you're too poor, which again, this all kind of feeds into each other, or that you're too challenged or that you're too whatever, fill in the blank. Everybody can have an excuse. Oh, Don, I can't do this because I don't know this. I, Don, I can't do this because I, uh, you know, I've had this happen to me. Oh, Don, I can't do. You can can't do this to. You can can't do yourself into oblivion. And guess what? You'll never make it because you tell yourself you can. It'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, because uh, you have to remember, Colonel Sanders started. He was 65 years old. You know, that's, that's not feeling too good when you wake up in the back of your car uh, to go off to the next restaurant to sell, you know, ni the 967th time to just hear another no. I can't imagine the tenacity you must have to be able to have done that. So don't be a victim, inventor, or entrepreneur. You know, it, it just, you know, you can come up with all of these reasons why, oh, this won't work because of this, or I can't do this because of this. And you internalize it and you think I am uh, somehow intrinsically a failure or intrinsically held back and you, you're giving other people the power to, to whether you can be a success or failure or not. And I think that's wrong. I think everyone has that power within their grasp. Don't let your circumstances define the best of you. Because if you let your circumstances define the best of you, they will define, the, define you, and it won't be your best. But if you shrug that off and say, I'm not going to let that, I'm not going to let this uphill battle hold me back, you have the perfect example of Colonel Sanders doing that. Persistence and tenacity always wins, and giving up always loses. I've seen it. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've come from. I don't care what your background is. I don't care anything about you other than the fact that persistence and tenacity is going to win and giving up is going to lose. Which one do you want to choose? And what you do when you get up in the morning is you choose persistence and tenacity or giving up. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. Be sure and like and subscribe. Help us to build our tribe. Share this with someone that you think might, uh, might uh, need this or benefit from this. And if you're looking for more information like this, go to empoweredinventing.com. We've got a lot of classes. We've got a lot of in-depth things to help you move forward with your idea. And again, to help turn your idea into a uh, successful product or business. So anyway, don't forget, it really is finger licking good. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little biased because it's got my state on the name. So anyway, uh, thanks again. And I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, maybe one of our online classes, or on the next video.